Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists with me, Diana O'Carroll. This week, we've a weighty issue. Hi, Naked Scientists. This is Taylor Sharp from Vancouver calling. And I had a question about the Earth and gravitational forces. I'm wondering which part of the Earth experiences the most and the least gravity since as you move closer to the center of the Earth, gravity reduces to almost zero. Thank you very much. So how can we find the most gravitationally strong places on or even inside the Earth? Hi, I'm Dominic Ford from the Department of Physics in Cambridge. The principle of physics that you need to work out the gravitational field around the distribution of matter is Newton's law of gravity. And what that says is that every piece of matter in the universe attracts every other piece of matter in the universe with a force that decreases with the distance between the two masses, but it increases with the mass of those objects. So when it comes to the whole Earth, you have to add up the forces from all of the little bits that make up the sphere of the Earth to work out what the total net force is. And that's actually a mathematical problem that gave Newton quite a headache when he was formulating his law of gravity. And it led him to pioneer a new mathematical technique that we call calculus to add up those little forces. But even though the math itself is quite tricky, it's fairly easy to see roughly what the answer must look like. Because if you imagine that you burrow down into the Earth, you've then got some of the Earth above your head and the rest of it below your feet. Whereas before, the whole Earth was pulling you in one direction downwards. So when you burrow down into the Earth, the gravitational forces are cancelling out. And that means there must be a weaker gravitational field down inside the Earth than there is on the surface. And similarly, if you travel upwards into space or climb a high mountain, then the Earth is further away, and that means its gravitational pull is weaker, and so you will weigh less. Standing at the top of Mount Everest might make you feel a little bit lighter in more ways than one. But what might make us feel a stronger pull? There are variations in the gravitational field across the surface of the Earth, and that's actually a way that people look at the geology and the rocks that the Earth is made of. So if you're looking for a particular kind of rock, you can look for variations in the strength of gravity that tell you that you've got denser rocks or less dense rocks, and that might tell you about the rock composition below your feet. The Earth does bulge out at its equator, but in fact the amount by which it bulges out is exactly the right amount to cancel out the centrifugal force from the Earth's rotation. So in terms of the downward force that you feel, it's the same all over the surface of the Earth. Certain rocks give certain areas of the Earth a stronger gravitational pull, and the bulge at the Earth's equator counteracts the centrifugal force of the Earth's rotation. On Facebook, Stephen Donkin said that you should place your bathroom scales on the roof rather than in the basement. Sean Hoskins said that the Naked Scientists ought to fund a field trip for listeners to travel the globe to find out. But alas, Imat Fahl said on the forum, data from the Gaucher satellite has already shown that the strongest gravitational pull is at the poles and the weakest is at the equator. I'm moving from the bathroom scales to the bathroom shower now. Hi, Diana. This is Francis Tapon and I have your question of the week. I'm in Croatia and I'm having a debate with my friend about water heaters. I have a water heater in my bathroom. I take one shower per day. I set it at just the right level so that it gives me just enough hot water for a five-minute shower, no more. My friend says I'm being inefficient and I'm not saving enough energy. He says I should leave the boiler on 24 hours a day because it takes a minimal amount of energy to keep the water hot once it's hot. If I turn it off, The water cools and then must be reheated from scratch, requiring far more energy than if I had left it on all the time. So, who's right? What is the best way to heat water? Let us know by emailing chris at thenakedscientists.com. You can contact us on Twitter with at Naked Scientists. You can Facebook us or write on the forum, and that's at thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum. 
Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.